Good evening, watch enthusiasts. For this midweek special, I'm going to be covering my um, interest in the various different models in the Tudor range, and which ones I, I think really look nice and uh, and appealing, and the ones that I don't think really have much of a place in the Tudor range. Um, so I, I've liked Tudor for a while now, um, and I, I originally really liked their dive watches specifically. So the Black, the Black Bay and the Pelagos. However, recently I've been looking at their, their other more dress-type watches, and um, I found I rather like some of them. It must be noted that I shan't be covering any women's watches, or if I do, I'll just uh, brush on them, rather than uh, actually properly reviewing them. Now, firstly, we have the Tudor Glamour, which, um, though it has a rather... Um, unpleasant name, is rather a nice dress watch. Now, there are various variants of this um, this watch. There's um, uh, there's a day-date version and uh, a double date. I, um, I rather like these watches because they're not clear nods to Rolex, which um, I think is something that Tudor needs to, um, needs to do, seeing as, um, seeing as they, they are a separate brand, even though they are the sort of... Uh, lower price version of Rolex. The the double day, um, double date even, sorry, version of this uh, this watch is also rather nice with a black dial and subsidiary seconds. Um, but I, I think both of these watches, n neither really gra grab me. They're very nice watches and I would I would advise them to anyone looking for this sort of dress watch. But I'm, I'm not sure. They, I think they lack a bit of personality, which I, I would seek in this sort of um, of watch. It ought to be noted that these uh, these watches use ETA 2892s of a high grade, I admit, but they're still ETA movements, so you're not going to get any special in-house um, gear here. This next watch is the Tudor Style, which is um, equally badly named, but never mind. Um, this, I think, is a very stylish uh, and... Um, uh, and quite a restrained sort of wristwatch. I rather like it um, in this steel guise that you see at the moment. Um, it, it, it does blend in, it would blend in with a suit or uh, other business attire. There are gold uh, versions with gold dials as well, but I, I rather like the stainless steel version. Um, this movement, uh, this watch even, does have a movement which isn't perhaps up to, up to the right grade. Um, it is an ETA uh, 2824. This next watch is a watch which I really would would go for. It's a lovely, lovely vintage piece. Its size has been increased, and this is the Tudor Heritage Advisor. So, this is a watch that you wouldn't really see very often, because it has an alarm. So it's a mechanical watch with an alarm, and it is an ETA 2892 um, movement fitted with the alarm. It also has a power reserve function, um, as well as the date. So it's a nice, um, a very nice piece, and it looks both uh, both casual, and would would fit any sort of um, formal occasion. There is also a black dial variant, which I suspect would be the one I would go for, and this is because the uh, the black really brings out the red and the uh, well the red on the dial, um, and the power reserve indicator as well as the um, the alarm hand. So it's a really nice watch, um, which I suspect I would um, would go for if I was in in the market for one of these these types of watches. This next watch is a uh, a piece in a uh, myriad of chronographs made by Tudor, uh, possibly too many, dare I say. Anyway, this is the Heritage uh, Chrono Blue, so waterproof to 150 meters, and uh, as you can see, a chronograph. It does also have a GMT bidirectional bezel, which is nice. Um, I'm not too keen on the, um, the 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 strap that it comes on. I prefer the the metal bracelet. I find the strap a bit too informal. Um, but it, it it's an attractive piece, although I think it, it wouldn't suit a vast number of occasions. So, for example, it couldn't be worn in a suit. Um, because of the colours, the orange and the blue, just being too bright. Um, and it has um, 
s uh, pushers, very similar to Rolex Daytona pushers, um, which is, I suppose, both a, both a good thing and a bad. This watch does run a um, an adapted ETA 2892, so again, nothing special, or nothing particularly special there. Now, Tudor do make this watch out to be a sort of a, a 1970s gentleman's watch uh, for the man who takes uh, his, his wife on his, um, his powerboat, but um, I'm not too sure. I think in their range there are various other models that would portray that character better. This watch is the Tudor Grand Tour, um, and this is the Tudor's answer to the Rolex Daytona. So it's a, uh, there's a chronograph and just a date version, um, and they run modified ETA 2892s. Um, now, th these are nice sports racing watches, um, but I, I'm not, not too sure about them. I, I, I like the case shape, and they do as well have a, um, uh, a GMT bezel, or a GMT inscribed bezel. Um, but I, I'm not sure they really work, because I, I find that the dial is far too cluttered for my taste. Tudor also make the Fast Rider, and this is their sort of um, sports um, type chronograph for road bikes. So, whereas the Grand Tour was the Ducati inspired race bike watch, this is the road bike equi equivalent. And um, immediately, I, I'm not too keen on the colours. I find them a bit too bright, but it's a matter of taste. Um, and uh, I do like the third dial being being present on the uh, th third sub dial being present on the face, which is a nice addition. I'm also not too keen on the rubber and leather straps. I think it'd be it would have been nice if you had offered a uh, bracelet option for this watch. But I can't argue with the fact that this watch is a nice, new, and quite fun um, alternative to their more vintage um, chronograph type models, and is also water resistant to 150 meters, which uh, does classify it as a very versatile watch. Now here we come to quite an interesting piece, because it's the Tudor Fast Rider Black uh, Black Shield, and this is a fully ceramic watch, which I I, mean, I have my reservations about ceramic because it is crackable but, and very very brittle, but then it is completely scratch resistant or, uh, in daily, with daily wear. There are a variety of different types. Um, there's a, b a, a white and black, a black and red, and a black and gold. I like, I personally like the black and white, this monochrome look. Um, because I find that red wouldn't go with all clothes, uh, just as the gold, I think, just looks a tad brash um, and a tad untearable. Uh, it's not classic, it's perhaps a bit distasteful. This watch is, however, for um, someone who doesn't want to spend as much money as a ceramic um, Blancpain or, uh, or Seeks uh, Speedmaster. Um, this is quite a good option um, because with the the white and uh, and black the monochrome look, it can look very classic. So this is actually uh, quite an interesting watch because I wouldn't personally wear this watch, but I think it sits in a very interesting spot in the market. Now this is one of my favourite Tudors actually. It's the um, the Tudor um, Heritage Ranger. So this is a watch which uh, harks back to the, the days of the, the Rolex Explorer 1. Um, although it has different hands, its dial it clearly has cues, um, and as, w as well as the case and the crown. So I really rather like this watch. It does just run an ETA 2824, but it comes in this lovely bun strap, um, which you know, I, I think is really interesting on a new watch, and you don't see very often. Um, and this watch does appeal to a market which um, isn't really very tapped for that sort of vintage explorer watch. And this watch does also have some um, some aspects which uh, would make it better suited to the, the job which it uh, claims to be able to, to undertake. For example, the sides are brushed uh, rather than polished uh, as they are on the Rolex, which would reduce scratches um, incurred on um, on epic travels. Now we come to my uh, second favourite watch in the current Tudor range, and this is the Tudor North Flag. 
So it's not in their heritage range. It is very much in their modern um, uh, modern range, um, and really, it is an, uh, a uh, a wonderful, wonderful watch uh, in a variety of aspects. Now, this is the first watch in the Tudor range to have their in-house MT5621 movement with the power reserve on the dial. Now this really does give an advantage to this movement because not only will it hold its value better than ETA powered uh, watches but it also has 70 hours of power reserve which, which means that you could put the watch down on the Friday evening and it would still be running on the Monday morning. One possible, and I do state possible, disadvantage to this watch are the lugs which have a proprietary setups they will only take the, the the specific bracelet or strap for this watch however Tudor do offer a, uh, a very very nice bracelet as well as a nice strap so that wouldn't really be a problem for me also I think it does give the case uh, a really nice shape um, as you can see from the photograph now we come to my third favorite Tudor watch and it's the Heritage Black Bay this watch is effectively a um, a replica of the vintage uh, Rolex, um, uh, Rolex cased Tudor Submariners with the, the the snowflake hands, and this watch is absolutely gorgeous and it's finished in the most wonderful fashion. So it comes in a black, a burgundy, and a blue um, a bezel variant, and uh, the black has gold uh, details as well as the the burgundy, but the uh, the blue has silver ones for a more cool and crisp look. This watch does also have a sort of a, a soft look to it. So with that gold on the dial, as well as having some quite small notches in the bezel and that nice large crown, it does mean that when compared to a Rolex Submariner, which is incidentally slightly smaller, um, two mils I believe, this entire watch does look more soft to the eye as well as that with that domed bezel. But all the lines, the lugs, the bezel, the teeth on the bezel, the hands, all of these things have a more soft and vintage warm theme which I think really suits the watch. It is also true to say that though this watch doesn't have a, an in-house movement, it has a simple ETA 2824, albeit I believe a chronometer version, it, um, it does suit the watch because the original Tudor Submariners were simply Rolex Submariners with snowflake hands and an ETA movement, not an in-house Rolex one. So I suppose this is actually more accurate to history than um, an in-house movement would be. This watch is also water resistant to 200 meters, which means that it can definitely be used for um, amateur diving, albeit uh, you'll need a different watch for professional diving. Finally, we come to my absolute favorite Tudor. This is the Tudor Pelagos. It's an absolutely beautiful professional diver made entirely out of grade five titanium. It also has ceramic bezel, a uh, ceramic bezel where the black bay doesn't, um, a looms bezel where the black bay doesn't, um, yes, and, and a helium release valve where the black bay uh, doesn't. We do also see Tudor's in-house movement with the 70-hour power reserve. The watch is available on two different straps. It's available on these rubber straps with a, an in, a diver extension. Uh, as well as a titanium bracelet. Now both of these come in the box with the watch so you can choose um, from the start. If you do choose to buy the watch uh, and wear it on, on the titanium bracelet, uh, bracelet, the clasp is quite fantastic. It has three levels of adjustment, uh, as you can see in the photograph, and then uh, a large um, slider for the um, wetsuit extension. And with a watch with the, uh, the capabilities of this, it really is understandable they would fit it with this, um, this system. This watch does also have a helium release valve, because it is water resistant to 500 meters. Um, the watch comes in at about 140 grams, I believe, making it very, very light. And that's 140 grams on the bracelet, let's bear in mind, uh, and 106 grams, I believe, with the rubber strap. So that really is a fantastically light watch for the professional diver. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Um, that's the only way a little channel like this is going to grow. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your watches. Over and out.